Your reason determines your reward. Well, I feel like preaching that. And if the reason I'm doing it is to be seen, then that's my reward. So if they see me, and if they say that I did it good, then that's my reward. But if I have a deeper reason, then I have a greater reward. And here's a game changer for me. I have this like Sunday school way that I see the Bible sometimes that messes me up because like I imagine stuff like when it says your reward in heaven or your reward from your father. I always used to picture like a a corner of heaven where there was like pots of gold. It was like more like uh, Lucky Charms and leprechauns than the Bible, but it was like it was like these big rewards in heaven, treasures in heaven. But you know, I'm probably not going to need gold in heaven because up there it's called gravel. You see what I'm saying? Like there's not a value, a monetary value. It's like V bucks in heaven, so it's not going to really buy anything. But now I'm realizing that. This is not a passage about, hey, man, give, and then when you get to heaven, it's going to be like, you know, your Uber is going to be a Maybach. It's not, like, it's not about getting this reward in another place. It's about getting it from another place. Then your father, this was the key to unlocking the scripture for me. It said, he sees what is done in secret. That used to scare me. Oh, God is watching me all the time. Ah, ah. But now I see that it means he's keeping score. And that means nobody else gets to. And when I live that way, there is a certain validation that only comes from him. And living according to the values that he's given to me, and the world can't give that. And when I'm not living in alignment with that, then I get the car, and the car is my reward. And when the, the smell of the car is gone, then so is the the thrill of owning it. If I, if, I, if I do it for people, then I have to get it from people. One scripture I like to think about when I'm having a pity party is one time when Paul was talking about preaching the gospel. and In certain situations, Paul would say, don't pay me. I don't want any money from you. I want something from, from God. And he, he wasn't always doing that, but when he explained it to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 9, he goes, uh, Hey, I got nothing to brag about. I preach because I'm compelled. In other words, God called me to do this, so I almost have to do it. But if I do it out of obligation, then it's just a discharge. But if I, I do it like it's a privilege, then it's a reward. So the revelation for me was that my reason determines my reward. So if I'm doing this for you, then you hold my reward. But if I'm doing this for him, it applies in every area of life. It applies to giving. Okay? Jesus said this. He said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. That, that's what he means by the game changer. I didn't come to play the game a little better, keep the law a little better, like put more on top of it. I came to change the reason that you do it. So one of those things is giving. In the Old Testament, you would see an obligatory system of giving where I bring the tithe because I have to, or else I'm under a curse, and so I bring God the first fruits of my produce and the, and, and the first fruits of, my, of all of my increase because I have to. It is obligation-oriented. That's how most of us live, but grace changes the game. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish it, but to fulfill it. In other words, I came to give you a different reason. Now it's not that I'm doing it because I've got to. I, I'm doing it because of the grace of God. Am I saying this right, Lord? It's a shift in perspective. And sometimes you keep doing the same things, but you find a deeper reason to do it. And then you find meaning in your life. But if you're not careful, you run around all your life changing the things that you do, but you find no meaning in the things. 
Because as long as you have shallow reasons, you get empty victories. But when your reason gets deeper, when you start saying, you know what, I'm giving to God, I'm serving God, not because I have to, or not because people might notice, or not because I'm going to go to hell if I don't, but just he's been good to me. Just because I know that my Redeemer lives. That's why. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Whatever is your reason controls your reward. You believe that? You believe that if you have a devotion just so you can post on Instagram that you had it with a picture of your coffee mug sitting next to Colossians chapter 3, verse 7, do you believe me that if that's why you did it, that's what you get out of it? And when it only gets 12 likes, don't cry, because I preached Matthew 6, 1 through 4, and I told you that if that is your reason, then that is your reward. I see it like a game show in my mind. Tell them what they've won. You know? It's like, you know, absolutely nothing because you did it for the reason. And people will go, well, I left that church. Why'd you leave that church? Because I got burned. So, were you in the cooking ministry? Does it, <laughs> you see the scar? Is it nasty? I get it. We get hurt. But sometimes the reason that we got hurt is because in our heart, what we needed from people was too much, and we shouldn't have been doing it for people to begin with. Oh, the applause died down by 73 percent. It always happens when you challenge the values. And I noticed a trend in my preaching a couple years ago that bothered me, so I've been, I've been working on it. Where I was, I was preaching a sort of theology that was a little perverted in this way, not on purpose, but you just shift toward it. You say, uh, if you will, God will, and um, God's gonna, and, and you fill in the blanks, you know, like, if you obey God in this area of your life, it will produce a blessing. So it was a cause and effect. What I'm coming to understand is, while that's true on the surface, the real blessing is built into the process. The real blessing is built in. When he says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you give, that means that it ought to be so automatic because you've operated out of your values to the point like, like these guitar players. Is there a guitar anywhere around here? When they play, there's got to be one, right, LJ? When they play, they don't have to think about. I would play y'all talk dirty to me by poison, but that's not appropriate for church. That's the first song I learned, though. That's what I think about when I see electric guitar. They do this with the right hand, and this with the left hand, but they don't. See these hands, these hands. If I've done that enough, this hand is going, and this hand is going, and the left hand. What is this? Glycerine by Bush? I think I'm playing. <laughs> of all the <those> songs, <laughs> child of the '90s. And if you've done it enough, it's not even a thing. And Jesus said, I would like for you to get to the point where my grace has changed you enough that you don't have to, you don't have to think about it or pray about it. God, should I give to further your gospel in the earth? I just need a sign. How about your common sense? 
And so he challenges my values. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to click the subscribe button on your screen so we can notify you whenever we release new content. Go ahead and subscribe now. I'll see you next time.